dear students welcome to this audio lecture in this lecture i shall be discussing the english poem titled night of the scorpion written by the indian poet nisim ezekiel so before i read out the text of the poem and discuss the subject matter and the language that has been used in the poem night of the scorpion let me first of all brief little bit about nisim ezekiel as a poet nisim ezekiel is considered to be the first indian poet who expressed modern indian sensibility in modern idiom born in 1924 in bombay he published night of the scorpion in his book titled the exact name in 1965 writing in english language ezekiel drastically influenced the literary scene in india during his long career spanning over 40 years nisim ezekiel received sahitya academy cultural award in 1983 and also received the prestigious padma shri in 1988 for his contribution to the indian writings in english After a prolonged illness, Nisim Ezekiel passed away in 2004 in Mumbai. Ezekiel made a great contribution to the field of Indian English poetry. Ezekiel's poems primarily examine themes associated with daily life, often wrestling with the ideas of belongingness and Indianness. and hence his poems are regarded to be quintessentially indian dear students in this audio lecture i shall be discussing one of nisim ezekiel's famous poems titled night of the scorpion written in 1953 now let me read out the text of the poem night of the scorpion I remember the night my mother was stung by a scorpion. Ten hours of steady rain had driven him to crawl beneath a sack of rice. Parting with his poison, flash of diabolic tail in the dark room, he risked the rain again. The peasants came like swarms of flies and bust the name of God a hundred times to paralyze the evil one. with candles and with lanterns throwing giant scorpion shadows on the mud baked walls they searched for him he was not found they clicked their tongues with every movement that the scorpion made his poison moved in mother's blood they said may he sit still they said may the sins of your previous birth be burned away tonight they said May your suffering decrease the misfortunes of your next birth they said May the sum of all evil balanced in this unreal world against the sum of good become diminished by your pain may the poison purify your flesh of desire and your spirit of ambition they said and they sat around on the floor with my mother in the center the peace of understanding on each face more candles more lanterns more neighbors more insects and the endless rain my mother twisted through and through groaning on a mat my father skeptic rationalist trying every curse and blessing powder mixture herb and hybrid he even poured a little paraffin upon the bitten toe and put a match to it I watched the flame feeding on my mother. I watched the holy man perform his rites to tame the poison with an incantation. After 20 hours it lost its sting. My mother only said, "Thank God, the scorpion picked on me and spared my children." So students, the poem Night of the Scorpion by nisim ezekiel is a narrative poem that narrates the story of an anonymous mother and her unfortunate encounter with a scorpion 
This poem focuses on a single episode in the life of an Indian family in which the mother of the narrator is stung by a scorpion one night. She suffers for 20 long hours while peasants, holy men and her husband attempt several ways and methods in order to heal her pain. In this poem, Ezekiel describes how continuous rainfall for 10 hours had driven the scorpion into the house where it crawled beneath a sack of rice and when his mother entered the dark room the scorpion parted the poison into her toe and disappeared in the night. This news spread throughout the village and the peasants gathered in the poet's house in large numbers like the swarms of flies and buzzed God's name about a hundred times, praying to stop the movements of the scorpion. They believed that with every movement of the scorpion, the poison would also move into the mother's blood. So the villagers searched their house with candles and lanterns to paralyze the evil scorpion. But the scorpion disappeared in the night. The villagers prayed that the sins of mother's previous birth gets washed away that night and that her sufferings might decrease the misfortunes of her next birth. They even prayed to God that the poison purifies her flesh. They sat around the mother who was groaning in pain. The poet described the peasants as superstitious and illiterate people, yet they had the willingness and the impulsive desire or eagerness to help the mother and share her pain. The poem wonderfully depicts the Indian ethos superstitions and cultural richness through this very simple incident in an Indian family. The father meanwhile has been portrayed as a skeptic as well as a rationalist person who tried powder, mixtures and herbs to cure the mother. He even poured some paraffin upon the bitten toe and burnt it. The priest who also came to the spot was also performing his religious rites to tame the poison. Finally, after 20 long hours, the pain of the mother subsided. For such long hours, the mother was groaning in pain and was not capable of uttering a single word. But after getting cured, she thanked God that the scorpion had chosen her and spared her children. This noble statement reflects the selfless love of the mother. This incident narrated in the poem symbolizes the typical Indian motherhood which depicts a mother's sacrifice, a mother's unconditional love and affection for her children. Now students, let me discuss the language that has been used by the poet Nisim Ezekiel in the poem. First of all, let us look at the structure. As far as the structure of the poem is concerned, it's a free verse containing eight stanzas. The lines are of varying lengths and has no rhyme scheme in it and has a mixed meter. The narrator's childhood experience is described or conveyed through several images that stimulate the different senses. For instance, the expressions like scorpion crawling beneath a sack of rice and also the expression like the peasants came like swarms of flies you know they are powerful visual imagery in this poem so as far as the visual imagery is concerned we may mention these expressions that i have just now stated scorpion crawling beneath a sack of rice also peasants came like swarms of flies so these are powerful visual images. Now there are also examples of sound imagery in this poem. For example, the peasants buzzed the name of God a hundred times. So the word buzzed. And also another expression like they clicked their tongues. The word clicked. Here buzzed and clicked. You know these are examples of onomatopoeia. 
it's a figure of speech it's a rhetorical device it's a figure of speech in which words evoke the actual sound of the thing you know that they refer to or describe for instance the tick tock of a clock or maybe the ding dong of a doorbell they are all examples of onomatopoeia it's a figure of speech as far as use of smell imagery in the poem is concerned we may mention the use of expressions like smell of candles and then again smell of burning oil in the lanterns these are all examples of smell imagery so we have mentioned the use of visual images sound images also smell imagery in the poem next let us come to personification now what is personification personification is a figure of speech in which an inanimate object is spoken as though it were endowed with life or human attributes for instance the expression in the second paragraph it has been used diabolic tail here tail has been described as diabolic suggestive of the devil so this is personification in the third paragraph there is use of simile what is simile simile is another rhetorical device it's a figure of speech it's a comparison between two distinctly different things which are you know indicated by words such as like or as here the peasants came like swarms of flies in the third paragraph it's mentioned as the peasants came like swarms of flies so here the word like is used so it's a simile the comparison between peasants and swarms of flies all right so it's a simile now there is also use of metaphor in the third paragraph metaphor is a figure of speech in which a word or a phrase is applied to an object or an action to which it is not literally applicable metaphors are used in poetry and literature to add some color to the language it equates two things not because they actually are the same but for the sake of comparison or symbolism so it's also a comparison just like simile but then the thing is that in simile there are explicit words like l i k e like or else and also words like as okay these words are there so they make the comparison very explicit but in metaphor that is not there for instance in the third paragraph it is mentioned as to paralyze the evil one hmm. in capital letters it is written as evil one to paralyze the evil one here this evil one the evil one refers here to the scorpion so here it's a comparison so it's a metaphor not a simile but a metaphor now let us look at alliteration what is alliteration this is another poetic device it's a sound device the repetition of the same letter same sound at the beginning of adjacent or maybe closely connected words in poems so one of the main reasons for using alliteration in poetry is because you know it sounds pleasing and it is also uh, because it you know it uh, tries to give some attention to the readers or the listeners now throughout the poem throughout the poem you know there has been several instances of alliteration for instance expressions like stung by a scorpion here sir the sound sir is repeated stung by a scorpion sir repetition of the sir sound in stung and scorpion similarly parting with his poison parting with his poison per repetition of per sound parting with his poison diabolic tail in the dark diabolic dark repetition of the der sound risked the rain der sound has been repeated again another expression like poison purify you know per per it's repeated through and through the thir sound is repeated poured a little paraffin poured a little paraffin per per you know it's repeated 
similarly flame feeding herb and hybrid so there are several instances of alliteration that is repetition of the same sound or the same letter at the beginning of adjacent words you know throughout the poem this sound device has been exploited by the poet Nissim Ezekiel also you, you you can see that there are a lot of antonyms opposite words antonyms means opposite words used in the poem throughout the poem for instance opposite words like previous next evil good curse blessing also skeptic rationalist these antonyms are also used in the poem now what is hyperbole hyperbole is also another figure of speech it's a rhetorical device which indicates an exaggerated kind of a statement not meant to be taken literally for instance in the third stanza there is an expression you know the peasants they buzzed the name of god a hundred times so a hundred times that is a hyperbolic statement and exaggeration so this is also a figure of speech next is irony now what is irony the use of language that normally signifies the opposite you know typically you know for humorous or maybe for emphatic effect irony for instance in the seventh paragraph there is a mention that the father is both a skeptic as well as a rationalist you know trying every curse and blessing so in the seventh paragraph this statement this sentence is very ironical the father being both skeptic as well as a rationalist now towards the end i would like to also mention anaphora anaphora is a rhetorical device that features repetition of a word or maybe repetition of a phrase or a clause at the beginning of you know successive phrases or clauses you know in a poem in the seventh paragraph again there is mention of you know in the expression for instance more candles more lanterns more neighbors more insects you know and then less rain so there's a repetition of the word more m-o-r-e more more candles more lanterns more neb neighbors more insects so this repetition of this particular word you know in you know this successive phrases this this figure of speech is known as anaphora so dear students do keep in mind that the several rhetorical devices that have been used by Nassim Ezekiel in this poem they are like the different images the visual images the sound or the smell images and also personification comparisons like simile metaphor also sound devices like alliteration and then we have use of antonyms hyperbole or exaggerated st uh, statement ir irony use of irony in the poem and also anaphora which which is a rhetorical device that features repetition of a word at the beginning of successive phrases or clauses so dear students i hope this audio lecture will help you to some extent in understanding the theme the subject matter as well as in understanding the kind of language that has been used by Nisim Ezekiel in the English poem Night of the Scorpion I shall come up with more such audio lectures thanks for listening